Hi, I'm Lynn Hardy, and I want to welcome you to this edition of The Living Word. This is a live stream broadcast that you can find on lynnhardy.com. Today, we are continuing with the series, Where is Jesus? In this episode, we will discuss the Sardis Church. Before we begin, let's um, give you the scripture, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. It says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. This is the living word. And Jesus came and lived among us, and he lives today. He speaks to us through his word. And today, he has brought a message for you. So let's recap what has come before. Jesus came so we could have life in abundance. So why are we not satisfied? Why are we continuing to look for other things? How can we connect with Jesus? Where is he in our life? We have discovered that loving God is the first and greatest commandment. We are told to love God. And it to love God means that we are obeying him. Not obeying him is to hate God. That is because we are siding with the enemy, God's enemy, and giving him access to our life. We are doing his work instead of God's work on this earth. Now, Christians have fallen into the same trap as Israel. You know, in Israel, when they came out of bondage, came out of Egypt, they were told to give a lamb every year. And this was for their sins so that they can remain in relationship with God. They had a sin, yet, yet look at this. This is in um, Hebrews. So it's the so New Testament. Hebrews 10, verses 26 through 27. It says, For if we go on deliberately and willfully sinning, after once acquiring the knowledge of truth, there is no longer any sacrifice left to atone for our sins, no further offering to which to look forward. There is nothing left for us to do then, but a kind of awful and fearful prospect and expectation of divine judgment and the fury of the burning wrath and indignation which will consume those who put themselves in opposition to God. You see, Israel came from Egypt, but they kept looking back, looking back to Egypt. They didn't want to um, follow God way, God's ways, trust in him. So they didn't receive the promised land. In order to come into all that God has, in order to be satisfied, in order to have our Lord guide us and lead us, we must be willing to do what he tells us to do. We must be willing to obey God. Jesus is our example. In Luke 9, 35, the Amplified Classic Version, it says, Then there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one, my beloved. Listen to and yield to and obey him. That is what we're supposed to be doing. Obeying God brings us into the promised land. Like Israel had the promised land. But not obeying him will keep us from his promises. In Acts 7, 39, it says, And yet our forefathers determined not to be subject to him, meaning God, refusing to obey and to listen to him. But thrusting him aside, they rejected him. And in their hearts, they yearned to turn back to Egypt. We must be willing to obey God, to follow him, to listen to him, to receive those promises. When you became a Christian, you were told that you could receive from Jesus, that he would be your provider, protector, that he had good things in store for you. But why are you not receiving them? Well, in order to fully understand this, we must look to the book of Revelation. The whole entire book of Revelation is a prophecy, a prophecy about the return of our Lord. It, was, it talks about his return. So everything in there can be applied to his return. There are seven churches. Seven is the number of completion and perfection within the physical realm. So even though there were more than seven churches at that time, God used seven of them as an example of types of churches. 
So if you are not receiving the fullness of what, what you were told you would receive as a Christian, it may be where you are connected and what you have been taught when you came in. So we're going to look at one of the churches of Revelation. It is the Sardis church. This is Revelation chapter 3 verse 1. These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God, that's the sevenfold Holy Spirit, and the seven stars. I know your record and what you are doing. You are supposed to be alive, but in reality, you are dead. This is a strong opening. If we look at all the churches in the, in the book of Revelation, it represents seven types of church, churches that would still be there when Jesus returns. So we can apply this and see if we are connected in a, in a Sardis way. So he's reminding this church that there is a Holy Spirit and that he, there, is se there are seven different ways in which he operates. Does your church believe in the Holy Spirit and his movement upon this world today? Then God is also reminding him, reminding this church of the seven stars. Well, what do seven stars mean? Revelations 1 verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. So now we know a candlestick is a church and the stars are the angels. So this church also perhaps has forgotten that God commands his angels, that there are seven angels in his hands that are active in this world. In the New Testament, it refers to people as dead before they knew Jesus and alive once Jesus is Lord of their life. This means that this church is dead when it should be alive. It means they are not actually firmly connected to Jesus. It's, it's accusing them of not being a, of being a Christian in a name only. We need to investigate this church and see why. Because we, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to, I don't want to be guilty of this. I want to be obeying God and rightly aligned. So let's see what it says about this church. It says, rouse yourself and keep awake and strengthen and invigorate what remains and is on the point of dying. For I have not found a thing that you have done, any works of yours meeting the requirements of my God that are perfect in his sight. This is the Amplified Classic version again. So did you know, were you told when you became a Christian that there were, you, you were expected to work for your Lord? Now, we're not saved by works. But according to this, if there are no works, you could be dead. You could be dying. Let's look at that and, make, and confirm it within the scripture. James 2 verses 17 through 21. We're going to read this about what it means to work for God. We want to make sure we understand it. So also faith, if it does not have works, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it up, by itself is destitute of power. It is inoperative, dead. But someone will say to you, then, you say you have faith, and I have good works. Now you show me your alleged faith, apart from any good works, if you can. And I, by my good works of obedience, will show you my faith. Look at that. It's talking about obedience again. <laughs> you believe that God is one. You do well. So the demons believe, and they shudder in terror. Are you willing to be shown proof? You foolish, unproductive, spiritually deficient fellow, that faith apart from good works is inactive, infective, and worthless. Was not our father Abraham shown to be justified and made acceptable to God by his works, which he brought to the altar as an offering, his own son Isaac? So here we see that faith. When we have faith that Jesus is our Lord, when we have accepted him as the son of God, there should be some sort of works to go along with it. And we should be obedient to God. We should obey him. 
if you are in a, Sar- a Sardis church, if if you have have under if you are connected to a place that doesn't tell you that once you become a Christian, there is expectations. You see, you have been bought with a price. It says that Jesus paid for us. We are His bond servants. If you haven't heard this before, you may be in a Sardis church. So how do you fix it? Well, we got to keep reading in Revelation where it's talking about the Sardis church. Here's Revelation 3, verse 3, again in the Amplified Classic Version. So call to mind the lessons you received and heard. Continually lay them on your heart and obey them and repent. In case you will not rouse yourself and keep awake and watch, I will come upon you like a thief, and you will not know or suspect the hour that I will come. Well, look at that. You must learn God's ways, obey them, and repent. Repent means to turn around and go the opposite direction. That's the works they're talking about. You must be willing to do what God says to do. It's interesting to note that only those who are asleep, who are dying, will not know the hour when our Lord is coming. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 6, back this up. This is the American King James Version. But of the times and of the seasons, brother, you have no need that I write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that that day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes on them as travail on a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brothers... Are not in darkness that day should overtake you like a thief. You are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep and do as others, but let us watch and be sober. If you are not yet aware, if you have not yet been told that the day is at hand, you should be able to look at what's going around. You should be able to understand and feel in your heart something has changed. Our Lord is knocking on the door. That day should not overcome you like a thief in the night because you are in the light. So did you know, even if you are in the Sardis church, you can still be awake. You may know these things. You may be aware that they're coming. So let's look at that. Let's continue Revelation 3, verses 4 and 5, the Amplified Classic Version. Yet you still have a few persons' names in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes, and they will walk with me in white because they are worthy and deserving. So when we are clothed in white, that means we're free of sin. It means we're trying to do our best to obey God. Thus shall he who conquers is victorious, shall be clad in white garments, and I will not erase or blot out his name from the book of life. I will acknowledge him as mine, and I will confess his name openly before my father and before his angels. Okay, so here is the consequence of not waking up, of not beginning to learn God's ways and apply them to your life. Your name can be blotted out from the book of life. Did you know that could happen? Or have you been told that once you say a prayer and take Jesus as Lord, that you always get to go to heaven and walk with him in heaven? That is not what the word of God says. It says that if you continue in sin and do not learn his ways, that you are actually dying that you were made alive when you accept him as Lord, but then you begin dying, that you must turn from that, begin learning his ways and be willing to walk in them. I know that many of you may have not heard about the book of life, so let's investigate that further. Often the book of Revelation will explain itself within the text. So if we go to Revelation 20, verses 12 through 15, we see this. And I saw the dead, great, are small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. That's their own book recording their lives. 
according to their works, it says. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and the hell del delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So not only is there our book that is recorded in heaven, what we do here on the earth. So we need to find out what God has created and designed us for so we can walk in his ways. But then there's also this book of life. When we take Jesus as Lord, our name goes in this book of life. It's the Lamb's book of life. But our name will be blotted out if we continually and repeatedly sin, if we don't learn his ways, if we don't acknowledge our Lord. The word Lord means owner. A land Lord is the land owner. It's he who governs the land. Back in the day when this was written, everyone knew if you had a Lord, he was your master. You were his willing bond servant. You had to learn his ways and, and do what he wanted or else there could be big trouble. So if you did not know this, when you said the prayer to accept Jesus and you were told you were saved, maybe it's time to say it again. Do you want to be in eternity with our Lord? Now you know what that word Lord means. The New Testament, the disciples refer to themselves as bond servants. A bond servant was someone who couldn't pay a debt. And so they sold themselves as a slave to a Lord who would pay the debt for them. You see, Jesus paid the debt you could not pay. He went to the cross and he took the punishment that you deserved. But he gives it freely to you if you will accept it. You have to accept the payment that you cannot pay. We teach about this in the online Christian church, that's onlinechristianchurch.com. In the Life of Jesus series, you can go through videos that will explain to you his walk on this earth and what it meant. But for now, if you are willing, if you are ready, if you want not to be part of the Sardis church, you can do that. Would you like to say that prayer once more and mean it this time? Know what you're, what you're committing to. It's so easy. I did it myself because I was baptized when I was a teenager and I didn't understand that it was his righteousness that I was depending on and that I was supposed to be listening to him instead of just doing what I thought was best. So let's do that simple prayer today. Jesus, I confess today that you are the Son of God that you were raised from the dead on the third day. And I accept you as my Lord. I am your willing bond servant. Teach me your ways and I shall do them. Show me what you would have for me to do and I will obey you, my Lord. Amen. That's all it takes is in your heart believing that he is the son of God. In Romans 10, it says, those who believe that he is the son of God, confess Jesus as Lord, shall be saved. But Lord means owner, master. It is time to learn. And that's what we're here for. The Living Word will teach you the stronger stuff. <laughs> and the online Christian church has many free classes you can go through. All the classes are free. You can learn about your Lord and what he expects from you today. That is our message. That is all the Lord has given for me to say to you. 
Decide which church you belong to. If you're part of a, a Sardis church, you can still walk with him in white. We will look at some additional churches so you can see the benefits of where you're attached to and, and examine the churches around you. See where you want to belong. See where you want to connect to the kingdom through. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you that you are faithful. I thank you you have done what is needed so that we can become children of the Most High. Lord, I thank you for your spirit, which you give to each and every one who calls upon you as Lord. I ask that you send your spirit today to all those who have prayed and accepted you as Lord. Let them receive your spirit today. Holy Spirit, you are he who guides us, who leads us. You are the sevenfold spirit of God. We accept you as we accept our Lord, and we thank you for revealing Jesus to us. Holy Spirit, I place each person into your hands. Lead them, guide them, teach them your ways. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, that's Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Until I see you again, shalom.